who am I to talk about this? Well, not many people here know my background and what I've done. Uh, but here's a kind of a, a schema over the different languages I've been working with and uh, frameworks and stuff like that uh, the last 20 years. And um, the question is, uh, why should uh, you trust what I'm saying? Because I work for a company who resells this uh, Dataflex product. And uh, actually, if you see here, uh, I've been working with PHP for a long time. And here I started at Front IT. Uh, I actually did some uh, Dataflex code in uh, console mode before I started. And uh, then I did some project in Dataflex. And uh, actually, for Windows, I thought it went pretty well. But the uh, web framework they had back then was kind of crappy. So I continued with my PHP and been working with PHP and basically ignoring Dataflex until now. And uh, now I'm actually thinking about maybe I should change PHP out for uh, Dataflex as a development tool. And I want to tell you why, and I want you to tell me why not. So I, maybe I can um, get some feedback if this might be a bad idea anyway. So I'm testing my hypothesis on you. Uh, yeah, you can see there's my Dataflex experience. So uh, back in the old days, uh, you were uh, using a web framework that actually was outside the Dataflex studio. So you, you had some wizards and uh, that generated some ASP and JavaScript code. And uh, when you had that code, you were kind of out in the cold uh, trying to uh, uh, modify that code because then you had three different technologies to work with and it wasn't cool. Uh, this is the conventional syntax of the language I've usually worked with in C and, and PHP and, and you name it. Uh, you can add a variable uh, like set it and you can have objects with uh, variables that you can just get and set like this and a function like this you call with a dot or an arrow and if you want to return a variable, then you use that. And if you want some data, you just query with an SQL query. It's very intuitive and easy for me because this is what I'm used to. Uh, the Dataflex syntax is quite different. Uh, so for me, it takes some time to get used to. Uh, if you're new to it, I don't know which is easiest to understand, but uh, you should know that uh, this is uh, something you will be facing if you write code in Dataflex. Luckily, you don't have to write that much code in Dataflex because the studio takes care of a lot of things for you, uh, which is really good. But if you end up writing code, uh, this is what you should prepare yourself for. Um, so, um, I'm actually not that biased toward Dataflex uh, as you might th think. Um, so the agenda for today, let's see, did I get all I should? Uh, I'm going to talk about some different frameworks, uh, PHP in general. I built my own PHP framework that I'm going to show you. Uh, briefly touch on XJS and Sencha Touch, uh, Microsoft Studio, uh, and uh, Microsoft also released a product called LightSwitch uh, for free in their new uh, development tool, and then Dataflex. And for each of these, almost each, I'm going to do a small sample of a mini application where I have a country and a city, and I'm going to make a, a view where you can edit and uh, update this. Uh, and then uh, I will try to explain my theory on where they are positioned in a flexibility and productivity scale. And uh, if you haven't got it, then I'm going to explain it a little bit more before we end with questions and pizza. Sounds like a good idea? Yay. So, my definition of a framework, you have some logic that works with data and handle stuff. And you have some presentation, which is the screen that you see. 
and the buttons you click. And uh, then you have the database in the bottom and that's equal for any system you like. Uh, you choose, then you can choose any kind of database, uh, basically. So I won't touch the database that much. Then in the logic you have something called a model, which has all the uh, classes for specific tables. For instance, we have a country table, then we have a model for the country that takes care of everything we want to put in the country. Uh, for example, we have a national day, then that should be a date, and uh, the model takes care of storing it into the database uh, as a date. Uh, and maybe if we want to have an increment, so everyone, every time someone fetches that country, we want to uh, increment that counter or something. You do that in the model, because then you can see it regardless of which view you're in. So you separate that. Then you have the view, and since we're talking about HTML applications, web applications, uh, that's usually just HTML code generated via JavaScript or via ASP or PHP or you name it. And then you have the controller, which is the code that handles the events from the buttons and tells you where the button should be placed in the form. And when you click save button, then you have some code in the controller that goes out and fetch the values from the fields and package them and put them down in the model so the model can save them to the database. And um, this is the uh, general model view controller pattern in programming. Maybe you've all heard of it. And I would like to add tools because in a framework you uh, usually have some extra tools. They, they have this feature where you can manipulate strings so you can uh, access different databases and stuff. And then you have some features like user login and, uh, and logging and testing and things like that. And here we have the um, uh, everything so you can see what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about these boxes. So. For each framework, I'm also going to put some colors in uh, the framework, in different parts here. And the green one is where you basically have everything built for you. You don't have to go in there and, and write some code or, or do anything. In the orange pieces, you have some code generated for you, but you need to go in and modify it in order to um, to complete the application in order to get it to work properly. And the white, you have to write all the code yourself. It's just a blank page where you have to go in. And <coughs> they might um, give you instructions on how to write the code, but the, you have to write it yourself. Any questions so far? Good. So let's look at the PHP frameworks. Today, these are some of the most popular PHP frameworks. And um, what the PHP frameworks compete in is uh, speed. Let's see. Uh, beautiful code. And uh, different plugins they have, uh, they offer. So they are all basically down here, trying to uh, give you a lot of features. And uh, some of them, the new frameworks, actually been um, better at uh, creating some mockups for classes for you in the model. But they don't know what you have in your database. Uh, and you, want, you could have anything in your database. So they don't want to do anything up here, basically. Uh, Falcon, for example, they have um, your, all your PHP code is compiled into C, so they run extremely fast. But today, computers are so fast, so in, in general, you need the database to be fast, not the language you use to uh, build your application. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more in code what I mean by these things uh, when I show you my framework, and that's the next step. Uh, I built a framework because when I worked at DSV uh, with the 3.2 uh, Dataflex application, 
I, I had some features I thought were very uh, nice and intuitive. And uh, therefore, I, I wanted to have that in my uh, application because I got an a, a assignment to build an application on the web for, for these wheels. Well. So basically what I did was I tried to imitate what I've experienced from Dataflex. So I built a, uh, some logic that generates uh, these classes and also generates a data manager and a, a web interface for me. Uh, so that I can start out with something. Because I had a database to start with, with about 30 uh, files, and I needed for each file to display a view where I needed a list and an edit form. And that was all I needed. And I didn't want to spend time coding all of those views, so I made something that generated all of that for me. So let's look at that. Uh, and here I have, uh, if you see anything, I'm not sure. Can I zoom this? No, I cannot. Okay. We'll just basically look at the code. If I take the uh, page, I have a class page, which is my model. I cannot zoom this. No. Uh, basically, what I have is the um, uh, uh, database fields. I have some functions down here that I'm using in the uh, uh, class and update and insert and stuff like that. And then I have uh, some views, an edit view. It's very difficult to see. Uh, I'm not sure if I can. Uh, changed it, but that that's not really important. Uh, you blow it up a bit because it's quite difficult reading. Yeah, uh, I can try. If, uh, no. Yeah, I can try that. Maybe I just. Ah, I'll show you instead what happens. Uh, I have the database here. There, too many feints. And um, I have some tables. I'm going to remove them. Yes, remove. And here I have my city table with the cities. And the, the structure is like this. I have an ID, I have a name, and I have a country ID. And then I have the country table where I have some countries in the national day. And then what I do is I take my application. And this is generating all the tables I need. So if I now go back into demo, I have the tables here again. And I can log in, and I have the, this menu here and a default page. But now I want my um, all my tables to be editable and, and uh, listable. So I run make files .php, and this one is creating some files for me. And now, if I go back to the application, I have a table with a country with a list. And I can create a new post. I can create Norway. And I have a May 17th. So I have a date picker. And I can go into city and add a new post. And it already knows that I have a country table connected. So I add a city. And I save. And if I go into the code now, it has generated a country and a city uh, folder. Uh, so if I look at the city folder, I have a simple class with basically no functions. Because all the functions are in my base class called table reader in this case. Um, which goes in and reads the database and sees what columns, what fields do I have in my database. 
do they relate to anything and uh, and serve the data that I want. And in the view, I have an edit, which basically calls a uh, gener generic edit file. So the code is generated on the fly every time I go into this page. And if I now want to modify this, then I go in here and I type mod equals one, just for the fun of it, and then I get the code. So I can copy the code. I just paste it in here and I run the page again. So here I have the code. Now it's not generated anymore. I can edit it. So I can go in here and take this row with the ID and basically remove it. And now the ID here should disappear and it does. So that was my framework. Um, and uh, basically, if you're going to do this in uh, uh, other PHP frameworks, you generally need to write all the code here yourself. And uh, some frameworks actually have some generator that can generate some basic uh, file here for you. And also the views, uh, usually you don't get anything generated for you uh, in the views. So let's continue. Now, uh, there are also these uh, JavaScript frameworks called Sensor Touch and uh, XJS, and uh, you have uh, jQuery with UI. Uh, Sensor Touch and XJS uh, are actually focusing a lot on the display, the interface, and you have some features that you can use. And uh, it's really cool, it's really nice uh, displayed, and they have a lot of cool features. But you have to uh, build these applications for yourself. So you need to, they have an editor that you can pay for, I think, where you can drag and drop and, and build your applications as you want. But generally, uh, you need to write the database manager, the database relation and logic. And they also use uh, local storage a lot. I was at a conference uh, with these guys, uh, Sencha, and uh, I was trying to build a mobile application for a database uh, that I have. And I tried to get the data this way and, and try to figure out how to communicate with my backend system. And uh, there were basically no one that could give me any good explanation on how to do that. Um, so, and the other thing is, this is in the JavaScript, so this runs in the client. It doesn't run on the server, which means that you can go in and look at the code. You can download the code and, and, and basically just take the application. And uh, you might also go in and modify the JavaScript while it's running and then take that uh, has rights variable and change that to true instead of false. And all of a sudden you have access to things. You so there are some security issues. I don't know how much they've solved uh, about that. Uh, I'm not going to show you more about that. Uh, then we have Microsoft Visual Studio, and that is a coloss. They have everything you can ever imagine and wish for. Uh, in this case, this is orange because they have a lot of these features, but they use them from the language itself, C Sharp or Visual Basic. Um, I didn't want to make that white because uh, there actually are a lot of these uh, built in. They haven't made so many plugins for it, but in the studio they have user logic, they have session, they have test, they have uh, you name it. Uh, but what they don't really have is these things. They have some wizards where you can generate a simple view from a simple database, but it's really. Um, kind of uh, uh, annoying. Uh, let's see, if I go in here, uh, maybe you're not seeing anything. Uh, I could uh, add an item. No, let's see. Add new item. And I want to add a web form. 
and now I have a SQL um, um, an access database uh, that I have connected where I have my city and I have my country I was talking about and now I could actually drag this in here oh, so I thought I need to go to the desi designer I could drag this in here and if I click here I could uh, do some modification I can enable edits and deletes and uh, I could uh, style it in some nice way and uh, then I should be able to run this and I should get the data from my uh, database okay it didn't work yeah let's have someone from Microsoft tell us how to do this because I found a blog post let's see where is it there you go and uh, if you want to do this right, you probably don't want to use their simple uh, lists with edits. You want to uh, create a, a view. This is getting started, so they start with adding a controller. And uh, you do this, and you add some components here, and blah, 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 blah. And then you go on and add a view. And as you can see, you are writing some HTML code here to add the view. Maybe I should size that up a bit. And um, then you get a Im index page and you have some more. And actually, if you look close here, uh, let's see, these are uh, action link HTML and an at sign. And this is generated code uh, from ASP. Uh, and all of these, let's see, do I have some good samples? This is the menu. Yeah. You realize this is quite a lot of code you have to uh, write in order to just get the view and then when you have the view you go over to writing the model and you need to add some uh, functions and classes to to manage the module and then you need to create a connection to the database and uh, you do it like this basically but you might also want to uh, do some let's see, access your model from the controller so you need to do that as well and basically when you're done you get a simple form that looks something like this and you have to go through all these uh, different steps and learn quite a lot of code to to get there so Microsoft has uh, since a couple of years back 2012 released their uh, light switch framework for uh, Microsoft Studio for free which is a new great tool for or new new but it's a great tool for quickly developing applications so let's see I'm going to change projects uh, not new projects I'm going to open an existing Open project. And here I created my uh, data sources because I couldn't get access to the uh, tables. I have a country and item tables, table items. This is just the, the city table. I didn't name it correctly. But the cool stuff here is if I want to add something to this application, I go in and add a screen. And I can select uh, some different options here, but I select a combo screen and I call it uh, country combo and I want to add the country and the country item and now I run this and I get this thing here and uh, Voila, 
I have my application. And here's Sweden, and here's Denmark, and I can go into Sweden, and I can see I have Malmö and Stockholm, and I can click down here, and I can add a new city. So, Gothenburg, uh, save, and now I have Gothenburg in my list, and uh, I can uh, edit this, and I can change the country I, the national day and I can go back and uh, let's go into Denmark and I have no city in Denmark so I need to add Copenhagen and save and it's responsive so I can fit it in a cell phone it's a really cool framework for building applications but Here's the but. Uh, you have no code. You only have this visual tool. And uh, I can select the, uh, let's see, view controller. And uh, here I can basically drag and drop. I can select an item and I can do a lot of things. And if I'm not happy with the, all the things I can do, I can always go in and uh, write some code and here I can select uh, and write some code uh, and uh, all of a sudden I'm in a new file called country combo and if I want to add a something here let's see what I can do on that one create before post I just want to add a button here, maybe a new button, method, uh, and you have some predefined methods, uh, yeah. tab details, okay, this one already has some functionality, let's see what happens, where did my button go, no, perhaps back. Oh, there. Show details. Yeah, nothing happens. So, if I want something to happen to that button, I mark it and I select this. Now I should have some on click. Yeah. Anyway, you see, uh, it's very nice for building quick and fluid applications, but you have to go in and edit everything uh, anyway in, in different files that will end up out here. You see the red one over there. And uh, uh, when it comes to, uh, to um, working with this kind of application, you have the layout here. It's not HTML, but it's a, a framework uh, where you set some tags. And if you're fluent in HTML, uh, this is basically the same I would say. Maybe they have a lot more features built in here uh, but you have your controller in some code and you have the view uh, as a drop-down selection list. So over to the Dataflex and here I actually moved all the views up here outside of the framework and the reason I did that is because uh, you don't work in the views in Dataflex. You don't care about the view layer. You only work in the data manager and you set up your views here in one box. And uh, that's what I'm uh, arguing is the key to easy making applications in Dataflex. Uh, you have the user session and uh, error handling stuff. You have um, some interesting features with the database management and you have the uh, database and string and uh, data handler from the Dataflex language. So let's take a look at that framework. There you go. And um, here uh, I want to look at the databases. I have a country table and I have a city table with some columns. 
And now I want to use a wizard for starters. A web object, web wizard. And I want to create O. country box and I let that be a header detail where the detail is city and the head is country at all at all and uh, here I can adjust I could put the name on the same line as I ID as you see here uh, I could do some other manipulations here uh, as well but I run this and now I have uh, the objects and basically what you see here is uh, an object declaration of a type uh, web view so you have the uh, code for displaying what kind of object I have here and if you go down uh, you instantiate a new object which is a data dictionary that takes care of the data for you and you have a web panel and then you have a web form which is the country ID you can see the item and it's correspond to this one and if I double click on any one of these I, there's the national day and I want the national day to be a date uh, selector so I write date form here and now I get a date picker on that one. So you see I can change the layout directly in the code. And if I want this to be not so wide, because it doesn't fit there, I could set the column span to 4. Now let's see, now the name is a lot shorter. And I could also go in and set the label width. And uh, see, PB label, yeah, PE label offset. Yeah, 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 but I wanted more space, so oh. basically, there you go. And now I can see I actually got it wrong because I got the data from the country down here as well and I want the c data from the city so that was wrong so I can just uh, delete all of those objects and they will disappear I will have an empty list so I go to my uh, data dictionary and I find my city data instead and I don't care about the country ID so I just drag these in here and all of a sudden I have name and so what happens if I run this application? Uh, I have it here in the menu, menu, country box, and I can look at Denmark, I can go in here and I can add a new one. Do we have any Danish city we want to add? Helsinger. Helsing uh, and it's in there and if you yeah, Malmö is a Danish city uh, but now I want to turn it all around and I want to um, yeah I should show you the date picker as well it's here so I can select the date uh, I want to just create a new uh, blank web view from scratch uh, city box so we want a, uh, just gonna remove all of this. So we start with an empty object. And uh, we want to add a list. So we go to the palette and add a web grid. And we don't want that column. We want a list of cities. So we go to our data dictionary and we want to add city and uh, the system already knows that country is connected to city so we have the country as well but I want to add the uh, 
city and the name of the country and I add that to the web grid but actually I want when I click this I want to have the name and the national day of the um, <coughs> city of the country for that city shown below so if you look in the menu I have name and national day and let's run this and see if it works City box. Oh, this is just too small. But you can see I have uh, the ID of the city, and if I, s ah, I should go and fix that. Actually, first of all, I want the country to end up lost, and <coughs> when I do that the country is just changing last and I want it to have a label country and I want this to have a label city and now it almost looks like a real application and I go to web grid properties I should probably go in here web grid and I want to set the PI height to let's say 200 at least and run the application again. And look at the city box. Now let's see. Now I have a list of cities, and if I select Copenhagen, then it's Denmark, and if I select Oslo, then it's Norway, and it just works uh, real nice and, and easy. So back to the presentation. As you saw, everything I did right now was in here. I didn't even touch the uh, database uh, data dictionaries. They were just there in the background doing everything. So if I want to modify anything, I want to calculate a total or I want to keep something, I could down, go down here and add a function or something like that. Um, so let's move on now. We looked at some uh, different kind of frameworks and uh, uh, from different areas, PHP, Microsoft, Dataflex, uh, some JavaScript. And um, here I have a graph where you have the flexibility of building something, what, what you actually can do, how many things can you do with this product. And the productivity, how quickly can you uh, get from a, an ID to actual uh, something that works not necessarily works perfect, but at least some mock-up that will give you some uh, something to work with. And uh, uh, a small button here is uh, not too many features in the platform, and the large one is uh, many features mm -hmm. in the platform. So this is just my interpretation of, of this, and, uh, and you all can feel free to, to argue for or against. Uh, I would say PHP frameworks in general are here within that circle because there are many different frameworks. And uh, my fr no XJS is basically down there. I, it depends on how you use it, of course. Uh, and I have uh, my framework there. It doesn't have more flexibility than the other PHP frameworks, but I think it's a bit more productive than writing all the code yourself. And then you have Microsoft, which is very flexible, but maybe a bit hefty to, um, to code in. And you have the light switch, which is very productive, but maybe not just as flexible. And then you have the uh, Dataflex over here, which is both flexible and productive. And I'm arguing that there's a green line here. And why I draw this green line is because I don't believe that whatever these programming languages, PHP, C Sharp, uh, .NET, and, um, Visual Basic, are doing, they cannot pass that green line. Uh, perhaps JavaScript could pass that green line because they have some object structure where, where you can put objects inside objects. But in all the other, you need to 
have one place where you instantiate the object and if you want to organize them on screen you need to go to another place where you can organize them. I can show you a sample. I, I tried to mimic what Dataflex did in PHP exactly with the view thing and I haven't figured it out yet because uh, it, it, the language doesn't support that kind of uh, uh, working. And here's uh, what I'm talking about. You have the view, you have a controller that gets the data from the view and call update to the model and the model then queries the SQL down to the database. And if you look at what Dataflex does, you don't care about the view because Dataflex handles that. You could extend the view and, and create your own uh, models, but usually you don't do that. You have the controller that sets the server and basically tells which table uh, you're going to use and you have a generic model for that and uh, you say uh, this object is an input field and you have uh, entry item object A uh, corresponding to the A here and then Dataflex knows what to do with this. So that's all you need to do in order to achieve that in the other languages.